Hello Third Year Historians and welcome to Lesson 6B um, of our Mafia topic. So like we said, Lesson 6 was about prohibition and the life of another um, Mafia gangster, Al Capone, but we split it into two sections. So the first one was about prohibition and this one is about Al Capone. So we're going to be looking at a little bit into his life as um, a famous Mafia gangster and possibly considered to be one of the most famous Mafia gangsters um, during the prohibition period. There's two success criteria points for this. You've explored a little bit about his life and you've made a judgment on his role. So do you think he was actually a, as big a gangster as they made out? And also you're going to work on a mini essay, um, National Five Skill for your assignment for this lesson. So Al Capone, um, probably most famous um, gangster of this period. His full name is Alphonse Capone, sometimes known by the nickname Scarfaced. Definitely comes to the kind of light as a as a leading boss at the Prohibition era. He was a gangster, um, a bootlegger, a racketeer. He was the boss of what was referred to as the Chicago outfit, so was in charge of all of the mafia um, groups in Chicago at the time. He had a lot of control over a lot of different things, so speakeasies, so these nightclubs or these clubs and, and bars and things that had been opened illegally during Prohibition, um, and you can see that picture is of a speakeasy there. Um, bookie joints, so gambling establishments, brothels, nightclubs, distilleries where alcohol could be made. He controlled horse tracks, so you could deal with betting and things like that and other sporting events. He controlled breweries and things as well. So a lot of control over things that made him a lot of money, especially during the prohibition period. He comes to main power in 1929 in an event called the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. In the playlist for this um, lesson on our YouTube channel, you'll see a little animated of video about this so if you're interested you can go and check that out as well if we were in class i would normally show you that clip but obviously we're not so you can go and check that out um the St. valentine's day massacre is basically the name that was given to this event february the 14th 1929 um several of chicago's north side irish gang and the italian gang that was led by al capone came to a uh, a bit of an argument and a disagreement and a lot of the Irish side were actually killed, seven of them were killed. Um, it was a kind of a fight between those two groups who, out of the two, who was going to take control of organised crime in Chicago and basically be the main top dog, the main person that was in charge of the crime in Chicago. And the Italian side, led by Al Capone, actually won and he became known as one of the major players in the mafia underworld and also in Chicago he was the, the top boss if you think back to our, our hierarchy. You can see him there and some pictures that obviously happened um, of the event which was then reported in the newspaper so it was considered to be one of the biggest massacres and criminal organised kind of takeouts at that point in time and really important for Al Capone because it then meant that no one really would challenge him. He became the kind of top boss at that point. So he was in charge for about seven years until about 1932 when he was 33 years old. There'd been a lot of federal authorities and a lot of authorities really intent on putting him in prison and prosecuting him for what they could prove at which point all they could actually prove was tax evasion for some of his businesses. Eventually they did manage to get that to stick and he was sentenced to prison for 11 years in a federal um, prison. You can see this is his cell where he spent his 11 years. Um, it's not particularly a nice sort of room, it's quite poorly kind of kept and things but nice furniture it was quite a relaxed kind of atmosphere as well this is what it looked like after he moved into it this is what it should have looked like so this is what it was like originally and then he obviously moved in and it looked much much better because he was so powerful even from prison he still actually had quite a lot of influence and a lot of say so he was treated quite well while he was there 
But the question becomes, does Al Capone actually deserve to be remembered as the mastermind criminal? So the, the kind of the greatest gangster of all time. He was referred to as gangster number one in Time magazine. You can see the picture of him there, gangster number one. And that's the question that we're going to work on. Does he deserve to be remembered as gangster number one? So to do this, we're going to do a quick task. It's basically going to be a hero or villain task. What I want you to do is take a full page or take a double page if you're using your jotter or just take enough space that you can make one side him as a hero and the other side him as a villain. And you are going to use the next couple of slides or if you're using the separate sets of sources which are going to be in the file as well, you can use those. But we're summarising the argument, so we're just taking key bits from each of the sources that we've got and we're going to put them onto one side of this table. So this would make him a hero, but this thing would make him a villain. Okay, so you might want to just pause the video roughly about six minutes and 15 seconds in, set up your table however you're doing it, hero and villain, and then come back. So our first source that we're deciding on which side does this go is from a doctor in Chicago. So it says, I was working in the hospital one night, an innocent man had been shot by mistake in a gang fight. Al Capone came to the hospital to see the man. He promised to pay for all the medicine the man needed. He said it didn't matter if it cost a million dollars. So this source is explaining that an innocent person was shot in part of the gang violence and as the major boss, he's in charge of all of the gangs in Chicago at this point in time, he felt responsible so he paid for the man's medical costs. So does that make him a hero or a villain? A lot of people would have argued that this made him a hero. So what we could do with this one in our table for our hero side, we would just write source A and we could put something like paid for medical expenses of innocent people, something like that. We're just going to summarise the key point from that source and put it into one side of the table. So you might want to pause this and do that just now and then we'll look at the second source. So the second source is from an Italian man in Chicago, source B. It says, in 1930, I did not have a job. Nobody wanted to give an Italian man like me a job. Al Capone started a good street kitchen. We could eat food there for free. He looked after us. So he's saying he couldn't get a job. He was probably very hungry, starving, not able to pay for food or things like that. But Al Capone had started a street kitchen where people who were unemployed or were struggling to eat could actually go to eat for free. And that looked after him. So you could say, does that make him a hero or a villain? Again, that one seems like a very much of a hero idea. So we'd put that down as he opened street kitchens or he fed the unemployed, something like that. So C says when Al Capone shot somebody, he would send flowers to their family to say sorry. Hero or villain? You can decide on that one, which one you think that should go on and maybe just summarise it as would send people he shot family flowers. Does that make him a good guy or a bad guy? You decide which, which one that goes down. There's not a right or wrong for this, so just decide and write it in. Last source on this slide. One day Al Capone came to my school from an Italian teacher in Chicago. He gave fresh milk to all of the children. He wanted them all to be healthy. He paid for children all over Chicago to have fresh milk every day. So again, hero or villain, that one's a very hero-like one. Um, he provided milk to all school children in Chicago. So that one could be summarised into that. So make sure you've got these four ones written in in some way and then move on to the next slide for the next couple. So this one, again, from an Italian man in Chicago, source E says, it was very bad when prohibition started. I needed alcohol. Alcohol made me feel better in my difficult life. Al Capone gave us alcohol again. I was very happy, but sometimes the alcohol he made was dangerous. It did kill some people. So this could be, is he a hero or villain for this one? He is providing alcohol, which is against the law. His alcohol is sometimes dangerous. It kills people. So you can decide where you're going to put that one in, hero or villain. Source F, just up on this one, from an Italian woman in Chicago. 
says Al Capone was an awful man. He killed hundreds of people with his gang. It was not safe to walk on the streets at night. So again, that wouldn't be very much a villain thing. He killed hundreds of people, made Chicago not safe. Could be how we summarise that one. Source G, an Italian woman in Chicago again, says Al Capone was a horrible gangster. He made dangerous alcohol. The alcohol made my husband go blind. Al Capone did not care. He just wanted the money. So again, that one's more of a villain one. He made dangerous alcohol again, made people blind. Horrible gangster. Anything you want to put from that. Source F is from an Ameri- or sorry H is from an American man. It says Al Capone did not pay his taxes. He had so much money, but he never gave it to the government like everybody else. So hero or villain. So that would be a villain side. He didn't pay his taxes. Okay. So again, make sure you've got these four put in someplace on your on your table, and then move to the next slide for the next one. So source I. This one's from a historian. Says his individual acts of charity were many. He paid the hospital bills of a woman bystander wounded in a street gun battle, and it was the Capone gang who set the first soup kitchens and block restaurants for the distribution of free food on Thanksgiving Day. So is he hero or villain? So I would maybe say for hero, and I just put acts of charity and summarise it that way. Source G, sorry J, says it's from Al Capone himself. It says, if people didn't want beer and wouldn't drink it, a fellow would be crazy for going around trying to sell it. I've seen gambling houses too, and I've never saw anyone point a gun at a man and make him go in. I've always considered it a public service to provide decent liquor and fair gambling. So does this make him a hero or villain because he is trying to provide what he thinks is a service? Okay, you can decide where you want that one to go. Source K, his mugshot, does he look like a criminal? Just decide if you think, does he look like a criminal? If you think yes, in the villain side, you can say he looks like a criminal. In the hero side, if you think no, you can say he doesn't look like a criminal. Source L from Milt Hilton, it's a book of memoirs of Al Capone said, people in Chicago back then looked on Al Capone as a Robin Hood. He helped the poor. My uncle worked for him. He had a dry cleaning and pressing place and Capone used it as a headquarters for selling alcohol. Capone sold the alcohol to my uncle for £12 a gallon and we'd sell it to the people for £18 a gallon. So hero or villain, you can decide. I would maybe say something like people in Chicago thought he was like Robin Hood, something like that. You could use maybe a couple of bits from this source, decide hero or villain. Source M gives you a photo of the soup kitchen for unemployed workers. So again, we've already said this one, but he did feed unemployed people regardless of where they came from, um, their race or their religious background or anything like that. They were all welcome. So decide, does that make him a hero or villain? This one's from the front page of the newspaper about the St. Valentine's Day massacre. Think about that word, massacre, seven of the Moran gang. Al Capone was actually there and did actually take part in this. So does massacring people make him a hero or villain? Probably more likely to be a villain if you're massacring. So massacring people during the St. Valentine's Day massacre would be a really good one to put in the villain side. Film poster, his true shocking story filled with bullet force. Does the media then portray him as a hero or villain? You can decide which one you think this one looks like. Does he look like a villain or a hero in this poster? And you could put the media shows him to be a hero if it's in the hero side. The media shows him to be a villain if you think it's in the villain side. Source P then from a school textbook in 2010 says Capone controlled the mayor Big Bill Thompson and senior police officers and fixed local elections. In Chicago, he controlled speakeasies, bookmakers, joints, gambling houses, all these things we've talked about. He drove in a bulletproof Cadillac and always contained his bodyguards who were armed with machine guns. Capone had more than 200 of his rivals killed in the years 1925 to 29. There were no convictions for any of these murders. So you could say for this one, murder and bribery of officials, that would probably make him a villain for those two and I'd put those two 
into the villain section, murder and bribery of officials. So now we've got our table with information about the two sort of sides. You're going to decide, based on what you've written down and what you now have, does he deserve to be remembered as gangster number one? All we're going to get you to do for this one is underneath your table, I want you to write two sentences and just use the bits and bold to help you. So this is a National 5 judgment skill. Okay, so you start it off as a sentence. In my opinion, Al Capone either does or does not deserve to be remembered as gangster number one. The reason I think this is because, and then just give a reason, summarise your thoughts. You might decide he did more good things than he did bad things. You might decide, though he did good things, they don't outweigh the bad things that he did. It's completely up to you. So you just write this sentence in under your table. Pause the video at 15 minutes and about 55 seconds. Write your sentence in and then come back. So the main assignment for this lesson and the main skill that you would have been working on in class for this one is the mini essay practice. Mini essays at National 5 History are the kind of main one that we've looked at this year that we've not looked at before and is probably the one that is worth the most marks and is this probably the most challenging or one of the most challenging of the questions in the National 5 skills. The mini essay asks you to basically write almost like a big explain question using a question to kind of frame your answer. So the one we are going to work on is this question. To what extent was Al Capone and gangsters to blame for an increase in violent crime during the 1920s? So do we think that violent crime increased because of people like Al Capone or did it increase for another reason? So for example, is the prohibition the main reason for this? When we write mini essays, we use a mnemonic to help us talk about it. And the one we use is I face. So when we do this, we would write I face out and we would score off each of the things that we do when we actually write the answer to make sure we get as many of the marks available as we can. I face stands for introduction. So we introduce the essay by giving a background fact or by explaining what we're going to talk about. And then we launch right into the main factor. So the main factor is the one that is in the question. So this one's main factor is about Al Capone and gangsters. So that would be the first paragraph that we'd be talking about. We start off by saying some historians think that Al Capone and gangsters was the main reason crime increased, because that's our question. And then we give two or three sentences that explain why, about what they did, why they increased crime. We then put a full stop and we move on to our A, which is our alternative. And in an alternative, we can discuss something different. So we start off by saying, however, other historians think prohibition was actually the reason that crime increased. So we're looking for a different reason that we've not already talked about. And then we would give two or three sentences that explain why prohibition was the reason. And then we put a full stop. We then get to C, which is our conclusion, and that's really easy. We just decide out of the things that we've said, which one is the most important. So in conclusion, this one was the main reason crime increased, full stop. Our E is then evidence, so we need to give one sentence that explains why we think that. So we say, I think this because, and then you give a reason for it. The mini essays are worth nine marks. What you get marks for is you get one mark for writing your introduction. You get five marks for your two paragraphs, any knowledge points that you can have. You get one mark for organising discussing more than one factor. So Al Capone and gangsters is one thing and then an alternative, something else to talk about um, gets you another mark. You get one mark for your conclusion. So in conclusion, I think this was the main reason for this. And then one mark for your evidence. The reason I think this is because, and then give your reason. So to help you out with this, I have given you the introduction and a little bit of a hand for the paragraphs. All you need to do is copy and complete these sections. So here's an introduction. You just need to copy this one. You can write your own if you would prefer, or just use this one. So during the 1920s, crime increased in America. 
Some historians have blamed people like Al Capone for this increase, while others think that prohibition was the cause. And those are the two things we're going to talk about. So you can pause the video and you can write this in, or you can come back to that and write it in, or write your own. But that gets you your first mark for your introduction. We then do our main body, so we start with our named factor. And I've started this off for you, all I need you to do is copy it and complete it. Some historians argue that Al Capone and gangsters were the main reason that violent crime increased in America in the 1920s because, and I want you to just give two or three facts about what Al Capone and other gangsters did. So you could say because they supplied alcohol, um, which created more crime because they used prohibition and things like that to open other things because they opened gambling or racketeering businesses. Anything that you can think of, two or three facts about what they did. Once you're done with your two or three facts, just put a full stop and then move on to the next paragraph. So your alternative. You would start off with the blue section and say, however, other historians argue that actually the Prohibition Act was the main reason that violent crime increased in America in the 1920s. And then go on back to the last lesson about Prohibition and give two or three facts about how Prohibition actually increased crime. Once you're finished with that, put a full stop and we move on to our conclusion. So again, pause this to help you structure it a wee bit and then move on to the conclusion. All you need to do for the conclusion is copy and complete this bit. So in conclusion, pick which one you think out of the two that we've talked about. Was the main reason violent crime increased in America in the 1920s? Full stop. New sentence. The reason I think this is because, and then give a reason why you've picked that one, whatever it might be. And that's the end of your essay. So this is your question. Okay, your introduction, a paragraph about Al Capone and gangsters, and a paragraph about prohibition, and then your conclusion. Use the past couple of slides to help you. If you're not sure, ask or email or put a message into the team for your teacher. You can use the inquiry skills guide videos that are in the YouTube playlist as well, and I'll link that into the information that's here. If you're not sure, go back. Okay, it's a matter of copying and completing the sections and finishing off and submitting this to the team. Any questions and let someone know.